What is up, guys? Dashing here for episode 735 of Community Universe Mode and edition number 32 of Crossfire. Big bless to Krizzy for that brand spanking new sexy intro. Love it. I hope you all love it as well. He has truly given us quite the gift. And this is, of course, the last episode of Crossfire, guys, before this Sunday's Regicide event. It is upon us, and I cannot wait, but I also can't wait for tonight's show as we get things started with some tag team action. The same way we shall end it. As, of course, our main event here tonight on Crossfire number 32. Going to be global champions Schmitty and Dara taking on what is sure to be an uneasy alliance between Bloody Justice and Josh Wolf. A lot of questions going into that match. What kind of state is Schmitty in mentally and physically? And can Bloody Justice and Josh Wolf work together? And coming up first, the return of Liam Aldridge. Haven't seen him since towards the end of last season. Reports saying he's been vacationing around the world. But now he's back and ready to step into that CMV ring. Once again, he's got himself an interesting tag team partner, that's for sure, Shreyon. As they'll take on Mr. Money in the Bank, Patch Mondo and Shanaz and Doni. But big news going into Regicide this Sunday, guys. It has been confirmed. It's official. Shreyon will take on Patch Mondo in a ladder match, guys, for Patch Mondo's Money in the Bank briefcase for only the second time in CMB history. A Money in the Bank briefcase is actually going to be defended. I don't know how in the hell Till Coval got this match for her latest subject. Maybe she's got some dirt on old Ken Donahue. But one thing's for sure, Patch Mondo cannot be happy about this. We've seen Mondo in a bad way these last few weeks. Last episode of Crossfire after his match, you remember Shreyon appeared out of the darkness and scared Patch Mondo half to death, had him running up the ramp and into the back. For sure, Tailcoat Val and Shreyon have gotten into the head of Patch Mondo. Can he get them out? Maybe Shanaz Andoni can give him some help with that tonight. Probably can't see Tail Koval lurking behind Shreyon in the darkness, but I assure you she is there as she will be later on tonight because Subject Miasma is also going to be in action taking on newcomer Nova. Both of those women looking for momentum heading into this Sunday's Women's Battle Royal. We've also got RVW scheduled to take on Ashley Rain. Very much looking forward to that one. Internet Championship going to be on the line tonight. A triple threat match as Nelson Rude comes from Supremacy to defend against Christian Kai and Billy Shaw. And a whole lot more. No doubt an unorthodox pairing here and Liam Aldridge and Shreyon. Patch Mondo, who's had one of the most meteoric rises in CMB history just a month into his CMB career on the grandest stage of them all, winning money in the bank. Pretty much guaranteeing him to be a future world champion, but... Will he still have that golden opportunity after this Sunday, guys, when he defends against Shreyon in a ladder match? A lot of people in the CM Universe call Patch Mondo a fluke, say his win in Ascendance was pure luck. I guess we'll find out this Sunday.
And of course, his tag team partner gonna be none other than his pseudo mentor, Shanaz Andoni, the real number one Bubba baby. Shanaz, of course, returning after his match gets Gurry Sukhanov a few weeks ago, where Sukhanov nearly put him through the canvas. Andoni needed a couple of weeks off. But now he is back to help out his buddy. The three time CNB Tag Team Champion. A former light heavyweight champion and anarchy champion. Patch Mondo has certainly found himself some backup. The question is, will it matter? Here we go, kicking things off on crossfire number 32. Liam Aldridge returns, and he's going to get things started against Mr. Money in the Bank. Patch Mondo might be the last time I have the privilege of saying that, Mr. Money in the Bank, Patch Mondo. What's up, Hellish? I feel like I haven't seen you in a long time. Always great to have big Hellish in the chat. And hello, Hydro as well. Tailcoat Val at ringside. Can't help but to wonder how she got Shrey on that match this Sunday at Regicide. Did she pull some strings with Ken Donahue? We know that those two aren't friends. Oh, Chris Benoit's ghost getting some uh, hits in on Liam Aldridge here. I think Patch Mondo wants to tag to Shanaz Andoni, though. Liam Aldridge not going to allow that. Tries to go for Shanaz, but gets kicked right upside the head. And Andoni going to take the opportunity to tag himself in as Aldridge makes the tag to Shreyon. Knife edge chop blocked. Elbow to the side of the head though. Shreyon with a regal cutter. Slicing up Andoni like Swiss cheese. Shreyon for his size. Very powerful. You wouldn't expect it. But then again, you can't really properly expect anything from Tail Cole Val. She looks to once again infest CMV. Shreyon will put the first arrival. Subject Miasma, Brett Angel, Subject Zero. Oh, brutal knee from Shreyon. Just might be this time next week, Mr. Money in the Bank. And has that been Tailco Val's ploy all along? Targeting Patch Mondo, she wants that briefcase for her own. What's up, Jaden? Irish whip into the corner. Currently, Andoni's not looking too hot. Never count out. Johnny Cat, baby. Great job. Got to give it up to Shreyon. Isolating Shinaz Andoni, not letting him make the tag. Oh, and there's another elbow. Another knee gets sidestepped, though. Andoni had that well scouted. Beautiful super kick. Followed by a tadpole splash with the splits. And Andoni says, that's it. Call for the bell. This one's over. Time to hit the beach with some martinis. Oh, and here comes the bionic elbow. Into the corner. He's tuning up the band. The CMB Universe on their feet. Shinaz Andoni with a kick to the shin and the butterfly DDG. Bad news for Shreyon. Shoots the half and hooks the leg. One, but a breakup by Liam Aldridge. And he's gonna pay for it. Punched in the face by Andoni. And a beautiful back suplex side slam from Mondo. But evidently, Andoni's not done with him. 
Gonna add insult to injury. Tying him up in the Windsor knot, and we know where that boot's gonna go, right up the derriere of Mr. Aldridge, but that distraction allows Shreyon to get back to his feet and take control. Cut onto the apron, he goes. Liam Aldridge doesn't seem to care that much. God, a hangman's neck breaker. Did you see the way that Andoni's back snapped over that rope? Sickening. And Tony, though, the veteran that he is, rolling out onto the apron so that he cannot be pinned, gets knocked to the floor and stray on, showing that he's not afraid to throw caution to the wind. High risk. Oh, man, goes for a sort of whisper in the wind type maneuver. And he just caught all of the uh, ringside mats with that. And Doni simply moving out of the way, but he cannot dodge those knees. Oh, and here's a uh, appearance from Sugar and Ralph. Really gotta get that Ralph emoji added to the uh, Twitch here. These knees, man. If Shreyon keeps this up, He's gonna take Shinaz's head off. Another regal putter. Shreyon can barely stand as we get up to a count of eight. Thankfully though, Antoni brings the fight back into the squared circle. Thankfully for who? Probably not him. Look at this jumping DDT though. Like I said before, Shanaz Andoni, he might be out. Might look like he's dead to rights. But you can never, ever completely eliminate Shanaz Andoni from the equation. Airplane spin making me dizzy as I watch this, going around and around and around. Finally gonna drop Shreyon rather unceremoniously and just collapses into the pin. One, two. That's not gonna be enough to do it though. Shreyon crawling his way over to Liam Aldrich, makes the hot tag at the same time. There's a tag made to Patch Mondo. Ducks the clothesline. And immediately Aldrich sent into the corner. Nice sit out Lariat. Tries for a stomp. Evades this Aldrich. Spear caught with a DDT. Quick thinking by Mr. Money in the Bank. And now it's going to be a wasteland for Liam Aldrich. But at the last second, he counters into a reverse DDT. And now the Money Man, the Cash King, as Tailcoat Val celebrates at ringside. Pedigree hooks the leg. One. Two, three, Liam Aldridge wins the match for he and Shreyon. Just like that, so quickly, things can turn around. Yet again, Shreyon gets the better of Patch Mondo. Even though it was Liam Aldridge pinning Mr. Money in the Bank, it's still a win for Tail Cole Val's newest puppet. And going into regicide, guys, things do not look good for Mondo. And a handshake between the unlikely allies. If I were Liam Aldridge, I'd get the hell out of that ring as quickly as possible. You can't trust Tailcoat Val. Are we looking at the next Money in the Bank holder, guys? Has Tailcoat Val once again rooted herself deep into the soil of Crossfire?
And coming up next, still a whole lot of action to look forward to, including our mega main event, guys. Global champion Schmitty and Dara take on the shaky alliance at best of Bloody Justice and Joshua. Of course, it is now confirmed. It's official this Sunday. I registered a triple threat match for the CMB Global Championship. Schmitty defends against Bloody Justice and Josh Wolf, the game changer. Gonna get nerves. Karma comes around, ladies and gentlemen. He screwed Bloody Justice at Battle Scars. But of course, the Justice family had their revenge. What unspeakable horror Schmitty endured inside of the Bloody Forest. We only got a peek. And I said earlier this week, it's hard to feel bad for the guy, but I don't think he truly deserves that. And what kind of mental condition will he be in? What kind of physical condition will he be in for our main event tonight and this Sunday at Regicide, his championship in serious jeopardy and that triple threat match. But speaking of triple threats, guys, coming up next, the internet championship is on the line as Nelson Rude comes to crossfire to defend against Christian Kai and Billy Shaw. The Cowboys from Hell this Sunday at Regicide will be challenging Project Psycho for the CMB Unified World Tag Team titles. Of course, the question is what two members of Cowboys from Hell will be competing in that match. It's Nelson Root tonight defending the Internet Championship. Will he be one half of the challengers this Sunday? We'll have to wait and see. Big opportunity tonight for Christian Kai. The last time we saw him, he was being paid off by Shea Hoxton at Wildcard to abandon his frenemy, Misawa Kage. Kai has been away spending that money the last few weeks as now he returns looking for his first taste of CMV gold. <laughs> Never forget. I vividly remember like a a last man standing match or something. Didn't I do that on a live event? I swear to God, Mighty Dude faced someone in a match like that. Remember when Mighty Dude beat Quantum? Let's not forget that. The evidence is pretty clear. It was captured on film. Christian Kai receiving a check from Shea Hoxton outside of the wild card arena. Kai chose money over backing up Masawa Kage on that night. Could be big money for him tonight if he becomes the new internet champion. But of course, this man is looking to accomplish the same goal. Billy Shaw making his season debut. He's been out on his ranch working hard, but now he's ready to step back into the CMB ring once more. On the same journey as Christian Kai, looking for his first CMB championship win. <laughs> and his uh, khakis. And of course, last but most certainly not least, the internet champion himself, Nelson Rude. The Cowboys from Hell have been dominating over on Supremacy. 
At every single turn, they've met Project Psycho and they've gotten the better of them. Will that continue this Sunday at Regicide? Will the championship reign of Jordan Nicholson and Hunter Quinn be short-lived? So here we go, triple threat match, first fall to a finish. That means pin or submission in the ring, no count outs, no disqualifications, just like it will be this Sunday at Regicide when the global championship is at stake between Schmitty, Bloody Justice, and Josh Wolf. My posture is shit right now. And I don't have anything to drink, so you wasted those points, I'm sorry. I apologize. Referee rings that bell. Let's get it on. As Billy Shaw been itching to compete once again. Goes right after Christian Kai. Didn't get all that jumping clothesline. Ooh, there we go. Makes up for it against Nelson Rude. Christian Kai definitely going to enjoy ooh, the agility advantage between these three. Whereas Nelson Rude has proved just how ruthless he can be couple of weeks ago in that no disqualification match against Hunter Quinn and even before that opposite Jordan Nicholson when he won the internet championship no feeling out process these guys are going right after each other for that internet championship and Kai with a beautiful knee right across the jaw of Billy Shaw it doesn't even seem to face him that much though Shaw you don't want to get in a brawling contest with this man as Nelson Root opts to turn his back on Christian Kai and Billy Shaw perhaps not taking them too seriously as legitimate challengers here Billy Shaw proving to be a tough man to put down here clothesline Doesn't do very much to help out the champion, Nelson Rude. Then got taken down with that vertical suplex, Hangman's Neckbreaker. Christian Kai regaining his vertical base. Coming right after it, Nelson Rude with a Meteora. Discus forearm smash took too long, though, and the champion with a soul kick and a big boot right down the gullet of the natural Christian Kai. Front headlock now by Billy Shaw, gonna let that go. Gets a kick to the midsection because of it. Ooh, and there's a hook to the jaw. Like I said, I'm not so sure Nelson Rude wants to start exchanging fisticuffs with Billy Shaw, who gets off a beautiful Enzu Lariat there. Might have this match won. Christian Kai attempts to break up the pin. Doesn't have to, though, as he starts to talk some shit. And Billy Shaw gonna have that jaw hanging on by a thread. Knocking Christian Kai into next week. Proudfoot coming out of nowhere. Ladies and gentlemen, the former undisputable heavyweight champion, Hallelujah, paying us a visit. Headbutt to Christian Kai. Nelson Rude goes for a drop kick. Not able to successfully connect with either opponent, though. Goodness gracious. I don't think Christian Kai is going to be tasting anything for the next week after that super kick and Nelson Rude to retain the internet championship, but not going to be enough, not just yet. There's that jumping cutter, though. Has Nelson Rude forgotten about Billy Shaw? Christian Kai getting busted open. Whoever goes for the pin first might have this match in the bag. And Billy Shaw gets lost in the woods. Going to pick up the pieces. One... Two! No, took too long. Christian Kai given a whole lot of time there to recuperate and pays off. Whoa! Nailed with that wheelbarrow neck breaker. And Christian Kai just popped right back up. A pile driver to Shaw. Gonna bust him open. And Shaw really can't risk injury going into Regicide this Sunday. That's if he is. 
going to be one of the two challengers for the CMB Unified World Tag Team titles. Another super kick. This time, though, it's Billy Shaw who gets rocked. And as Christian Kai is hung out to try, Nelson Rude hopes to retain. Shot to the midsection by Shaw. Jumping clothesline. Gets an STO. Another pinfall attempt by the champion. Christian Kai is napping, guys. He is not moved. Blood just dripping from that cut across his forehead down out of the apron. It's pretty nasty. Nelson Rude paying him no attention. Focusing in on Billy Shaw. Another cutter handing them out. But maybe Kai was playing possum as soon as Nelson Rude hit that cutter. Kai came back to life. Dragon suplexing out Kai. Kai gonna seize the opportunity. One, two, three. Christian Kai is the new internet champion. What a ploy by Christian Kai, and it earned him the internet championship here tonight. Christian Kai played dead, waited for the perfect opening. And that's how you do it, folks. The Natural earns his first CMB championship. Christian Kai, bloodied, but holding gold. Sorry about that. Taking a quick drink of my water. I lied to you, Gumble. I do have hydration. And coming up next, some action in the women's division, guys, ahead of this Sunday's Women's Battle Royal, where the winner earns a shot at the Women's Championship next month at Validation. Riley Van Wilson going to take on Ashley Rain. I've been looking forward to this match all night long. And it was the China Pulling Connection who last week knocked off the team of Ashley Rain and Danielle Davis. Huge upset, but a much needed victory for the friends who lately have been skating on thin ice. And that was, well, only made worse this past episode of Supremacy when Xiao Rong eliminated Riley Van Wilson from that battle royal where the winner would earn the last entry in the Women's Battle Royal this Sunday at Regicide. Eventually it was won by Janet Torr, of course. But Riley Van Wilson did not take that in a good way backstage later on in the night, getting in Xiao Rong's face and telling her, hey, why did you eliminate me? I thought we would at least work together. It seems you did. Xiao Rong saying, hey, you know, I want it just as much as you do. Riley Van Wilson walking away, and it just seems like these cracks are continuing to form in the friendship of the China-Poland connection. Can they try and get back on the same page here tonight? Riley Van Wilson certainly is looking for a huge win over Ashley Rain, who we know this Sunday at Regicide is set to challenge Akira for the CMB Women's Hardcore Championship, a rematch from Tokyo, Japan, where Akira beat Ashley Rain to win the title. And these two, last, yesterday it was on Supremacy in that triple threat tornado tag team match, working well enough together that they got the victory. But of course, that friendship or whatever respect they have for each other is going to be put on pause this Sunday when that Women's Hardcore Championship is on the line.
It's a good sign to see them coming down to the ring here together. Shaorong and Riley Van Wilson have always been very supportive of one another. Riley Van Wilson even said when Shaorong won the Magnificent Six briefcase, she can't wait to see her best friend holding the Women's Championship. But of course, as we all know, Shaorong failed to cash in that briefcase, becoming only the fourth person in CMB history to fail a cash in. And Shaorong is desperate to earn that Women's Championship opportunity again. She says that's why she eliminated Van Wilson from that Battle Royal yesterday on Supremacy. She can't afford to let anything get in her way, and she thought Riley Van Wilson understood that. But of course, Wilson wants that Women's Championship as well. It's been a rough couple of years for Riley Van Wilson trying to get back to the top. And this Sunday, they'll both have that opportunity in the Women's Battle Royal. 20 of CMB's best female competitors. Looking to head to validation. Whereas Ashley Rain is hoping to recapture the Women's Hardcore Championship this Sunday at Regicide. Whether Akira's victory in Tokyo, Japan in front of her friends, her family, her colleagues was a fluke or not, we'll find out this Sunday. Ashley Rain trying to stay positive. It was a very long climb back to the top for the small but mighty one. And at Battle Scar, she won that hardcore championship. She was feeling good, maybe a little bit too good. And it's very interesting to see Akira here at ringside, guys. Definitely seems like she and Ashley Rain are forming a fast friendship. There is a lot of respect between the two. But as I mentioned before, when it comes to this Sunday, one-on-one, -on -one, the title on the line, that has to be put on pause. It's got to go out the window because only one of them is going to leave as champion. Starting things off here between these two. And, of course, this goes way back a couple of seasons ago. Riley Van Wilson won the Women's Championship, you might recall, and a triple threat match by breaking Ashley Rain's knee. Riley Van Wilson still to this day gets a lot of flack for that. Of course, it cost Rain a couple of months of her career, and well, Rain was never really able to properly get back on track until recently. A couple of months ago, she started looking real good again, winning a lot of matches, winning championships, getting back to form, you might say. Hooks the leg, that's Ashley Rain. Early on trying to win this match, looking for some big momentum going into Regicide. A win like this, though, could put Riley Van Wilson right back in contention for the Women's Hardcore Championship. She challenged for it at Ascendance 8, the grandest stage of them all, and kind of ironic because it was Angelina Hawkins who defeated her by nearly breaking the knee of Riley Van Wilson. Wilson was on the shelf for a little over a month. Nice counter there, quick thinking by Riley Van Wilson. Hellish, you're going hard in the chat, deleting a lot of messages. What's going on? I just keep looking over, and every time I see Hellish deleted a message, Hellish deleted a message. Forearm smash. Oh, what a stomp to the gut. Quite the gallery at ringside. Shaorong and Hugh Grant, the advocate of Shaorong. Her quarter, and Akira just silently observing whether or not this is a show support for Ashley Rain, or maybe scout her out just a little bit more. Don't really know. Hooks the leg, oh, but only gets a one count. Ashley Rain with the Shiranui, and this could mean a victory for the small but mighty one. Crushing defeat for Riley Van Wilson, it'll be, but she's not out of the fight just yet. Tries for the stop, front headlock instead, chops away the hand. These two know each other very well, and it shows. Ashley Rain been using this maneuver as of late to put away her opponents. That's how she won the Women's Hardcore Championship back at Battle Stars, but that's not enough. She knows it won't be for someone the caliber of Riley Van Wilson, and so the raindrop might do the trick. Hang on a second, Hugh Grant. I don't know if Riley Van Wilson would much appreciate Hugh Grant getting involved.
involved on her behalf. I mean, it did just save her from short defeat. That would have been a three count. Ashley Ray now a bit miffed. This gives Riley Van Wilson a chance. I'm not sure if she even fully realizes the fact that Hugh Grant distracted the referee there. Ashley Rain gets to her feet. And Riley Van Wilson waiting with the crunchy. But just like Ashley Rain knew the Sunset Flip Powerbomb wouldn't be enough and went for the raindrop, Riley Van Wilson trying for the stunner. But Rain was ready for it. Shot to the chest. Even though Wilson was momentarily stalled, not able to hit the stunner, she's making sure to stay on top of Ashley Rain like a monkey on a cupcake. And she is riding right now. Rain is in big trouble. Forearm smash out of the corner. Bulldog. Ben Wilson looking to hit something big to finish off Ashley Rain. Not going to get the chance, though. And Rain hands on her hips. You knew going into this one, it was going to be a banger. Ashley Rain looking around like, God damn. She is not out just yet, though. Akira showing her support at ringside. Trying to rally. Here comes some kicks to the chest in bunches. And that last one right to the back of the head. Ashley Rain, lucky that her head is still attached to her shoulders. Maybe not for much longer, though, as the stunner is pulled off perfectly. One, two, oh. But only a two count. Riley Van Wilson can hardly believe it as she looks around. It's Ashley Rain we're talking about, though. Former Magnificent Six winner, former women's champion, Riley Van Wilson knows it's gonna take more than that to win this match. Turned around in the corner, Xiaorong and Hugh Grant getting a pretty good view. As RBW is pounded in the corner. And evidently, Ashley Rain isn't done. Look at this, guys. Rain, we really saw her come into a, a sort of new aggression last season. She's done taking shit from anybody, and that includes Riley Van Wilson. She can get mean when she has to. Oh, and here comes Slice Red number two, baby. Hooks the legs. One, two. Come on now. Ashley Rain is now thinking, this is ridiculous. Ah, but scaling to the top rope once more slowly, but surely, and so long as Hugh Grant doesn't decide to get involved again, a second raindrop, I do believe, no, took too long, took too long to actually rain. Now Riley Van Wilson is back to her feet, kick to the side of the head. That'll ring your dinner bell. These fans are on their feet. What a match this has been so far. Ashley Rain has to be careful, though. So does Riley Van Wilson. Both of them with such huge opportunities this Sunday at Regicide. They don't want to risk an injury. But neither of them is going to give up. Neither of them is going to lay down. That's not what they're about. On any given night, they're going to go out to that CMB ring and do what they do best. Ashley Rain rolling out to ringside, guys. This is the first time in the match that she has retreated, falling at the feet of Akira. Interesting visual there. As Shao Rong started to make her way over. Interesting. Was she thinking about getting involved somehow? Campbell clutch now. Ashley Rain. Far from a submission expert, but going to try her hand any way to beat Riley Van Wilson in this match. As we've seen, the raindrop not doing the trick, that twist of fate. 
going to leave some serious rope burn. Oh, wait a minute. I don't know if I agree with this risk. I don't know if it's worth it, and it's not. Ashley Rain going for a fish drop from the top rope to the outside of the ring. Guys, she may have just broke her fist. You know how many little bones are in your hand? Just a little bit of pressure is all it takes to snap them. RBW has been looking for something here in the corner all match long, and I think she's finally going to hit it. Putting Ashley Rain up on the top rope. The Polish warrior, guys looking to hit something deadly. This is not going to end well. Superplex! Good God! Ashley Rain getting to her feet with no idea where the hell she is. A second stunner. One, two, three. Riley Van Wilson with a Huge win here tonight. And just think about that. It took a superplex and a second stunner to win Riley Van Wilson this match. But what a performance. That's the best we've seen RBW, guys, in a long time. In my opinion, that makes her a favorite going into this Sunday's Women's Battle Royal. I still don't appreciate Hugh Grant getting involved. Who knows if he didn't, Ashley Rain may have been the victor. I don't think Riley Van Wilson is aware that he interfered. When she finds out, she's probably not going to be too happy. Riley Van Wilson is a very prideful fighter. I didn't even see any of this. Someone promoted and called my commentary. Sh <gasps> the gall. How dare thee. I was really into that match. Hey, RBW is the representative for all of us pale boys out there, all right? But coming up next, guys, here on Crossfire number 32, some more tag team action before we get to our main event where the Purge Global Champion Schmitty and Dada take on an uneasy alliance of Bloody Justice and Josh Wolf. It's going to be Party Hardcore, Sam Valentine and Mike Hawk taking on Chris Diamond and Dave Turner, who are looking to prepare for this Sunday's tag team match at Regicide, where they will take on the Purges, Lance Romance, and Jarek Lawson, guys. Both of their titles going to be on the line. That's right. Lance Romance and Jarek Lawson defending the Anarchy Championship and the United States Championship in the same match against the team of Dave Turner and Chris Diamond. If Dave Turner and Chris Diamond win, they will become the respective champions. Dave Turner will become United States champion. Chris Diamond will regain the Anarchy Championship. And so a little bit of a test here for Diamond and Turner. It's not the first time they've worked together. In fact, last month they lost a tag team match to the team of Jarek Lawson and Lance Romance. But they're getting another shot this Sunday. Well, don't count out Mike Hawk. He has been involved in some incredible matches over the last couple of months. His match against Chris Diamond, for example, back at Wildcard for the Anarchy Championship, man, Mike Hawk 
put up a hell of a fight. He kept going and going until he couldn't go any longer. And you look back to last week even, his one-on-one -on -one match with Jacob Ziegler gave the Scotsman a run for his money. Definitely put up a bigger fight than I think most would give him credit for. Chris Diamond trying to stay positive after failing to retain the Anarchy Championship against Lance Romance a couple of weeks ago. The bowler with the opportunity though to regain that championship this Sunday at Regicide. But as he said himself, he's gonna need some help to do it. The Purge has the numbers game. And so he's enlisted Dave Turner, who has his own gripe with United States champion Jarek Lawson. Remember their match at Wildcard? An absolute instant classic. And you can't really ask for much better backup than the Hall of Famer, three-time world champion, Dave Turner. Mike Hawk is ready for a fight on any night. He'll take on anyone and everyone. Man, woman, it really doesn't matter for Mike Hawk. He just wants to fight. But of course he leaves room for play too. Mike Hawk loves to play at all the local clubs. You'll catch him with Sam Valentine and the rest of Party Hardcore. There ain't no playing tonight though. Opposite Dave Turner. The Hall of Famer, three-time world champion and a multi-time tag team champion as well. Chris Diamond certainly knows how to pick him. Dave Turner reviving his career midway through last season, coming out of retirement for one more run. He says his ultimate goal is the global championship of the United States Championship, a title he once held many, many years ago. He's not going to shy away from. Here we go, Party Hardcore taking on the team of Chris Diamond and Dave Turner as Diamond and Turner hope to build up a little bit of momentum, maybe be sharpen their tag team skills a bit before this Sunday. Where definitely Lance Romance and Jarek Lawson are gonna have the advantage as the champions, as the more experienced team. with an Irish whip here. Diamond coming back off the rebound. Tries for an elbow to Sam Valentine. Instead, going to get Irish whipped into the corner. You'd love to see Chris Diamond, man, once again, back to form. It was a dark, dark time for Diamond last season. He went to a place not many men can recover from, but Diamond did. He fought and he fought mentally, physically, and I really think that win against Pierre Thompson at Ascendance, it meant a lot to Chris Diamond to finally get a win at the show of shows. And that showed him the light. He was finally able to get back on track. And now the baller, Bay Bay. He's hoping to become a two-time Anarchy Champion. This Sunday, Mike Hawk tagged in. And here comes Chris Benoit's ghost for his second appearance of the night. Power bomb. Out onto the apron. Diamond holding on for dear life. Gets a forearm smashed as Mike Hawk. I'm going to target the knees. 
Mike Hawk is very agile. Don't let his looks deceive you. And Diamond, he remembers that match at Wildcard. He's trying to take out the base of Mike Hawk early on. Keep him grounded so that he can hit this super kick here, nearly taking the head off of Mike Hawk. Into the corner now. A proper tag made to Dave Turner. And these two are gonna show off. Ooh, they're still to the team with a double super kick. Knocking Mike Hawk for a loop. Makes the hot tag to Sam Valentine. Gets the hell out of there and immediately a spear from the tree. Knee down out of the top of the head. Big boot to the chest won't keep Dave Turner down though. That big old ham bone will. Top of that turnbuckle. Dave Turner's been in that ring with the best of the best of the best. Sam Valentine, though, giving him a hard time at the moment. Let's not forget Sam Valentine, a multi time world championship contender. Wow, what a super kick! Shades of fellow Hall of Famer Paul Anderson, Dave Turner's former tag team partner on that one. And now I think we know what Turner's looking for here. Could be time for the terminating spike, which is bad, bad news for Sam Valentine. The dream gonna be dreaming. Shoots the half, hooks the leg. Will that be enough? A quick and easy win for the team of Diamond and Turner tonight. No, Mike Hawk takes out the referee, breaking up the pin there. And now my cock is caught off guard from behind. How can you come up from behind on Mike Hawk? Hold the phone. Is that the Aiden I think it is there? It better not be. Mike Hawk back out onto the apron here as Dave Turner goes to collect Sam Valentine from ringside. It is. <laughs> The legendary Aiden reappearing in my life. It's just what I needed at a moment like this. Dave Turner sending Sam Valentine back into the ring and an elbow to the eye. I was just watching one of uh, one of Haley's streams the other week too. And I said, where's he? Where is he gone? Where is my my knight in shining armor when I need him most? Stomp to the quad. Sam Valentine gonna close the distance, trying for a clothesline. Gets a spinning soul kick and the bro kick. Dragging Sam Valentine out of the corner. Things not looking good for Party Hardcore right now. And here's a deadlift German suplex, baby, with a bridge to pin. One, but Mike Hawk gonna break the bridge. Where's Chris Diamond going? Up to the top rope, he's ready to fly at a moment's notice, but Dave Turner says, I've got this handled. As the burning hammer busts dream open. Another pinball attempt, will that be it? No, Mike Hawk is on his game tonight, guys, he's sharp. Chris Diamond's gonna blast Mike Hawk with a knee. Don't you hate when Mike Hawk gets hit with a knee? Drops down behind. Vertical suplex caught with a hangman's neck breaker. And Valentine now with his vintage military press ups. Incredibly powerful is Valentine. Showcasing it there. But he is out of it right now. Not looking too hot as Sam. He should try and make a tag to Mike Hawk, but Mike Hawk is currently incapacitated at ringside. Valentine gonna try to take care of this on his own with the pump handle face buster. Taking Dave Turner for a test drive. Hooks the leg, one, two, two, but with Mike Hawk down, nobody to stop Chris Diamond from breaking up that pin, although he does get his receipt and Zularia to the back of the head. And 
Now it's a handicap situation for the Hall of Famer. Elbow to the knee. I have to admit, oh! Turner out of nowhere locking in the Dragon Sleeper and an immediate tap out by Sam Valentine. That is how quickly Dave Turner can have you done. The Hall of Famer, as soon as he locks in that Dragon Sleeper, you ain't going anywhere but to sleep unless you tap out. Big win for Diamond and Turner. And I was about to say, I am a big fan of Mike Hawk. I'll admit it, I love Mike Hawk. I love seeing Mike Hawk come out to that ring and do what he does best. I have become, I think, Mike Hawk's number one fan. But unfortunately, tonight was not the night. As Diamond and Turner are looking good heading into Regicide this Sunday, guys. Can Diamond regain his Anarchy Championship? Will Dave Turner once more be United States Champion? Time will sell. I don't think Mike Hawk would have tapped. Mike Hawk, he's not the kind of guy to tap out. He can he can go all night long, Mike Hawk. The day Aiden joins CMV will be the day the angels come down from heaven. And his weapon of choice will be a, a Honeywell thermostat. He'll hide it in his, uh, his shorts, pull it out, smack someone right in the head with it. And are you ready for this next match? Because... I was really looking forward to RVW and Ashley Rain earlier tonight, which did not disappoint what a match that was. But this one has the potential to steal the show. Jacob Ziegler going to go one-on-one -on -one with D'Angelo Prince. And still to come tonight, we've got Miasma taking on Nova in our huge main event as global champion Schmitty and Dada take on Bloody Justice and Josh Wolf. Can they work together? That is a combustible element if I've ever seen one going into this Sunday's triple threat match at Regicide. Jacob Ziegler at Battle Scars failed to become number one contender for the CMV Global Championship, but he is not letting that stop him. The last couple weeks, Ziegler has been in top form, more recently obliterating Mike Hawk last week. And now he sets his sight on the returning D'Angelo Prince, who of course re-emerged last episode of Crossfire in that six-man tag team match. Hadn't seen him prior since Ascendance where he lost the International Championship to Los Funos Fatales. May they rest in peace. What does that mean? I got to go see you next time you stream when I'm free, what, in person? <laughs> I thought you moved to Florida. That's quite a drive. And you can see the intensity in Ziegler's eyes. He is going to be waiting for the winner of this Sunday's triple threat match. No doubt about that. Ziegler has made it clear he came back to CMB for one reason and one reason only. The money. And to become world champion once again. Because as world champion, well, your paycheck gets bigger. Your stock goes up. And that's something that maybe D'Angelo Prince is looking to finally accomplish. The former Anarchy champion, former international champion, with a win over someone like Jacob Ziegler tonight, he could be propelled to the top of Crossfire. And he knows it.
I think that's what Ken Donahue is thinking as well, giving D'Angelo Prince a match of this caliber, a test. Ziegler is looking to make sure D'Angelo Prince fails that test. Gets a big old F. So here we go, Jacob Ziegler, D'Angelo Prince one-on-one -on -one in our tertiary main event. Ziegler looks to continue his winning streak. D'Angelo Prince stands in the way of that car double tie-up. D'Angelo Prince is going to try to use his unmatched athleticism, incredible agility, outmaneuver Ziegler. Ziegler, the kind of guy, once he gets you right where he wants you, you've got little to no chance of turning things around for yourself. I'd certainly say Ziegler has the power advantage here between these two. And he's also mean. But D'Angelo Prince known to break the rules himself as well. You get a clean break there, which is pretty shocking. I would have expected somebody to take a cheap shot. A neck breaker. Ziegler retrieves and D'Angelo Prince hot dogs. Power right, noble tie-up again. Ziegler gets the upper hand. Taken for a walk. Over to the ropes, it looks like. Ziegler stops him dead in his tracks, though, with some elbows to the midsection. Kick right up under the knee. Ziegler going to transition right into a cloverleaf. Now, we've seen Ziegler in recent weeks utilizing a lion tamer to win his matches. So this is definitely interesting, trying to wear down the legs and back a little bit. Early on, he had that locked in for quite a bit of time before D'Angelo Prince escaped. And now slingshot from the ropes back towards the center of the ring. This is definitely a new Ziegler, not just personality-wise. He has upped his in-ring game. What a super kick right into a straight jacket German suplex. That was nasty. That was kind of rude. Ziegler doesn't care about offending anyone anymore, though, and doesn't care who he has to step on to get back to the top. Ziegler said he was content spending the rest of his days at home, competing elsewhere around the world. He had no intention of coming back to CMB until he was offered much, much, much more money than he was expecting. And, well, you can't turn that kind of dosh down. The former footballer says as long as CMB keeps on giving him those checks, he ain't going anywhere. And like I said before, winning the global championship means that much more money for the Scotsman. out Laird in the corner. D'Angelo Prince, you might not like his attitude, you certainly might not like his in-ring style, bending the rules to his favor. But you gotta respect D'Angelo Prince's grind. He's been in CMB for well over three years at this point. On again, off again, a lot of injuries get him on the shelf. But he always comes back. And he's always willing to give his best, but his best might not be enough for Jacob Ziegler, who hits that release Tiger Bomb he's also been using lately. Into a figure four head scissors. And Ziegler's just playing around with Prince. I think it's pretty clear Jacob Ziegler does not take D'Angelo Prince very seriously as a challenger here, much like Mike Hawk last week. Just doing with Prince as he pleases. Where is Ziegler going? Rolling out of the ring with D'Angelo Prince. Oh, and a basement drop kick. That ringside, D'Angelo Prince trying to get an upper hand. Kick to the knee, and those are the kind of kicks you have to watch for. A lot of people think, oh, a head kick. And obviously, you don't want to get kicked in the head, but most people, I think, they try to ignore those kicks to the leg, and those will add up, especially with Jacob Ziegler. Like I said, he's been using that lion tamer lately. If you let those leg kicks go unchecked, you're gonna pay for it. D'Angelo Prince not looking to let it happen. Rocket kick by Prince. And 
this could be enough right here. One, two, but only a two count. D'Angelo Prince put a second away from the biggest win of his CMB career, and he knows it. As he looks to go right back on the attack, Ziegler with a shot to the gut, though. That'll suck the air right up out of you. Have you gasping for breath like a fish out of the water. And the DDT from Ziegler spells doom for D'Angelo Prince. One, two. But Ziegler, astonished at the fact that D'Angelo Prince kicked out of that DDT. Not a whole lot of people do, but there's the swag walk. Jacob Ziegler gets caught with the kick. And the uncrowned Prince might have this match in the bag just like that. One, two. Oh. Oh, talk about a close call, 2.999. My God. And Ziegler starting to get back up. The Angel Prince is kicking him. Did I tell you to get back up? Spinning slow kick. Irish whip into the corner. No, off the ropes instead. Half kick. And again, Ziegler won't stay down, though. D'Angelo Prince gonna make him stay down with a swinging neck breaker. And now maybe thinking about the Tequila Sunrise, D'Angelo Prince has a submission maneuver of his own. But Ziegler says, I don't think so. Instead, stabbing Prince in the chest, double knees. Blowing out his lungs. Dragged by the arm towards the center of the ring. Angelo Prince, late in this match, wants to start to slow things down a little bit. Hammerlock. Going after the exposed fingers. Some joint manipulation by D'Angelo Prince. Before rolling off the kidneys with that knee. And Prince is loving the uh, admiration from these fans tonight. I think out of these two, if the CM Universe had to pick, D'Angelo Prince would be their favorite. Nobody likes Jacob Ziegler. Elbow to the side of the head. Ziegler going after Chris Benoit's ghost, evidently, as he attacks the corner. And that's going to give Prince the opening he needs. Oh, Fisherman's Buster. Just about drilling Ziegler through the canvas. Ziegler got that thick neck, though. his own tactics against him. And Ziegler says, enough of this. Another DDT. But D'Angelo Prince was ready for it. And Zulari in the corner. No, but a complete shot. Prince can barely get to his feet, but into the pit and maybe, just maybe if he upset one of his career, no. A lot of ego in that ring right now, but it is not stopping either one of these men from delivering a hell of a match so far. And I'll tell you what, D'Angelo Prince has been largely in control, especially these last few minutes. Ziegler's gonna have to come up with something in quick if he wants to win this match and not be upset. If he wants to make sure he stays in the running for a future global championship match. But that all might be about to go down the drain a second. Kick to the head, shoots the half, hooks the leg, one, two, Ziegler says no, and D'Angelo Prince is livid, slamming the canvas, he can't, he can't comprehend the fact that a second trouble in paradise did not keep Jacob Ziegler down. But stays positive, this Prince. He knows it's only a matter of time. He's got to continue to wear down Jacob Ziegler. Luring him into a drop toe hold, hanging him out to dry on that middle rope. Prince can't afford to hesitate now. Going out onto the apron, delivering a knee to the side of the head. Up to the top rope now. A big risk this late in the match. Could go either way, but luckily it pays off for Prince. Elbow drop to the heart, guys. One, two. Oh. 
close call after close call after close call. Back to the top rope. D'Angelo Prince says, hey, that almost got me the win. Let's try it one more time. Now he's talking shit from on the top rope. Blockbuster turned into a snap power slam, and that's Jacob Ziegler right there in a nutshell. Quickly into the Anaconda Vice. Now this is a new submission hold I have not seen Ziegler utilize before, but maybe it'll be enough. No, Prince getting some knees off to the back of the head. If Prince could just focus, stop talking. Jacob Ziegler stopped pandering to these fans. He might have had this match won a long time ago. Carry over the shoulders. Now a reversal fest is doing here. Back and forth, these two go. Tip for tap. Another complete shot. And come on now, says D'Angelo Prince. That has to be enough. Oh. Hands atop his head. D'Angelo Prince starting to wonder if he can win this match. A lot of Jacob Ziegler opponents, though, feel that same way. I mean, look how much Josh Wolf had to hit Jacob Ziggler with at Battle Scars to keep him down for the three count. Counters out of the corner, though. Ziggler. The near three count there himself. Back into the figure four head scissors. This is giving Jacob Ziggler some time to catch his breath, think about his next move, while simultaneously ensuring that D'Angelo Prince doesn't go anywhere. And Ziegler is just manhandling D'Angelo Prince right now. Doesn't look good for Prince. Spear! Spear by Ziegler! But D'Angelo Prince with the leapfrog. Oh, that elbow coming right back off the ropes. And there's the spear. He got it the second time. One! Two. But now it's Ziegler who's looking around like, huh? Ain't no way, no how, but Jacob Ziegler, if he hits a second DDT, no man, Prince will not let him have it. And you can see Ziegler's getting pissed now. He's getting fed up. But he best not allow his emotions to get the better of him. chicken wing lung blower and Ziegler just hoping after that it'll be enough somehow some way that's a desperation pin by Jacob Ziegler right there stomps the back of the head Ziegler raking at the eyes of Prince you knew it was only a matter of time before Ziegler started utilizing those underhand tactics and look at Ziegler with his swag walk as if he's been dominating this match or something Far from it, D'Angelo Prince has been in control for the majority of this one. And Prince doesn't want to have anything to do with the ringside area. He blows a kiss. I'm loving this match. Two egocentric MVPs clashing here on Crossfire. What a match it's been. You knew it was going to be phenomenal, though, as soon as you heard about it. What is this now? Ziegler. Who's he been training with? He is sharpening his submission game. Of course, he has to let go of that Dragon Sleeper, though, lest he get disqualified by the count of five. German suplex. Can barely stand, though. The Scotsman tiring out. And that means he's got to win this match sooner rather than later. Slowly bringing Prince to his feet. Oh, and a visit to the chiropractor for D'Angelo Prince. All he needs is one shot, though. Boot to the jaw. Ziegler trying to crawl away. D'Angelo Prince making sure he doesn't go anywhere, though. Ziegler gets a boot right up under the jaw. Rocking Prince long enough to get another spear. One, two, three. Jacob Ziegler victorious. What a match. For the second week in a row, Jacob Ziegler underestimated his opponent, and they gave him a hell of a fight. More than Mike Clark last week, though, D'Angelo Prince had 
Jacob Ziegler beat at multiple points throughout this match, man. What a close one. But when the dust settles, it is Jacob Ziegler standing tall. And it's hard to argue at this point that he should be the one awaiting the winner of the triple threat this Sunday at Regicide. The question is, who will be global champion after this Sunday? And I'm just going to quickly go grab something to drink before our co-main event, guys. Maybe use the uh, men's room, if you don't mind.
All right, I am back. And we shall continue here on Crossfire number 32, guys. As our co-main event is coming up next. Our main event still to come. Tag team action. Global champion Schmitty and his right-hand woman, Donna, taking on the shaky alliance at best of Bloody Justice and Josh Wolf ahead of this Sunday's triple threat match for the CMB Global Championship. But first... Telco Val has already had her presence felt here tonight earlier when the team of Liam Aldridge and her newest puppet Shreon beat Mr. Money in the Bank Patch Mondo and Shanaz Andoni. Now it's Miasma's turn. And of course, Miasma is one of the scheduled opponents for this Sunday's Women's Battle Royal at Regicide. Telco Val in one night guys could have Shreon in possession of the Money in the Bank briefcase and Miasma as number one contender for the women's championship no doubt about it Telco Val has quickly reinserted herself in the very essence of CMV we thought that the alliance to end Telco Val was successful they burned out her HQ sent everyone scattering like cockroaches but no she's come back and she's apparently stronger than ever I'll tell you this much the plucky rookie Nova has got her work cut out for her here tonight Got to see a bit of Nova last episode of Crossfire. She debuted in a tag team match replacing Lexi Moniz. And although she was unsuccessful, we'll get to really see what she's got to bring to the table here tonight. Her singles debut. And she is also a part of that women's battle royal. Could we possibly see her rocket to the top of the women's division? This is a hell of a first opponent to go one-on-one -on -one with. You can already tell Nova in high spirits. Loves being here on Crossfire. But that mood might be immediately dampened once that bell rings. The fuck is this guy? That's a great first comment, man. To introduce yourself. <clears throat> Referee rings the bell, though. Miasma and Nova tie up, collar and elbow. Go behind by Miasma, who is going to be the much bigger, as you can tell, if you have eyes. If you don't, I'm sorry. Reverse chin lock. And of course, there's Tail Cole Val standing, watching silently from ringside. I'll tell you what, though, this would be a huge singles win for Nova. A lot of momentum on her side going into the Battle Royal this Sunday. Kick to the back. Sends Miasma up to her feet. Caught with a German suplex, though. Nova's not backing down. And even more than that, she is taking the fight to Miasma. I don't know that Tail Val is an enemy you want to get on your side right out the gate, but Nova doesn't seem very afraid of that. Right out of the ring she goes. Miasma. Oh, with a baseball slide drop kick, bare feet to the face. That's got to smell bad and feel bad. And there's a shotgun shot. Miasma saying, I'm about to take your head off as she goes off the top rope. Nobody home, though, for that attempted whisper in the wind. Boston crowd now cinched in by Nova. Who clearly wants to impress everybody in the back here. Coming out the gate red hot. Yasma's 
animalistic though. You really can't form a, a proper game plan. You can't prepare for a subject Miasma or really anybody in Tailco Val's camp, any of her subjects, her puppets. Nova's gonna give it her best though. Like I said, a win here, or even an impressive performance, might get her on Val's watch list. And let me tell you, that's not a list you want to get on. Drop kicks the lower back. We've seen what she's been doing to Rami Young these last couple of months. Nova's got to be careful here. Can't let her upbeat attitude get caught between tail coat Val and Miasma. Because against Miasma, a smile and a handshake isn't going to get you much. Send to the corner, drop kick to the lower back. Domination by Miasma. But Nova's still got some fight left in her. Face first off the top turnbuckle. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. See, Nova knows she's got to change up her game a little bit. Making sure Miasma gets a good taste of that top turnbuckle. And here we get an Indian death lock. Submission game on point. First the Boston Crab. Neither doing very much as Miasma with a ritualistic approach to Nova in this match. Party wants to know where Tailcoat Val finds these individuals, and the other part of me wants absolutely no part of delving any deeper into the world of Tailcoat Val. Back into the ring, Nova watching out for Tailcoat Val. Ooh, but gets a cheap shot from Miasma. Dropped on that top rope face first. That's all Miasma needs. Irish Whipper to the corner. Drop kick to the lower back. Taking the air right out of Nova. And immediately follows that up with the Dragon Suplex. Bridge to pin. Legs lift. But Nova somehow, with a millisecond to spare, stays alive in this match. Rolling neck snap. We can see that Miasma is starting to get a bit exhausted. Of course, with an approach like hers, you're not going to last very long. That's why Miasma isn't known for having these lengthy five-star bouts. She comes at you like a caged animal let loose. Miasma trying to shake off them cobwebs. Gets an elbow to the top of the head. He's now coming back off the rope. Oh, and there's the bare foot to the face, man. You'll be lucky if you don't get a toenail in the eye. Asma now grabbing at the forehead of Nova. Looks like she's trying to rip her head right off. Nova fighting though. Can she get back to her feet? Yes, she can. Might be academic at this point, guys. Nova. Oh, with the thumb to the throat. One, two. <laughs> How about that, though? And Tailcoat Val, with her arms crossed at ringside, doesn't look all that impressed. Is it with Miasma, though, or Nova? Perhaps Myth Miasma hasn't been able to put Nova away. Oh, and now Tailcoat Val looks to get involved as she grabs at the top turnbuckle. Referee Tyson gonna fall right into that trap. Nova tries for a kick to the gut. Miasma gets there first with a front headlock though. Hang on. Nova! 
with a shot of Nova King. Oh, but tell Cole Bow. And look at guys, that was over a three count. That was a four or five count. Nova had this match won. But tell Cole Bow. And Tyson's not enough. Tyson actually making a good call for once. He has ejected Telco Bow from ringside. Although it might be too little too late. Telco Bow heading to the back and Tyson better be careful. He didn't just get on the shit list. But props to him. He's usually too scared to enforce the rules, especially when Telco Bow is involved. Nova mocking her, taunting her. Nova gonna take the bait. Switch to send to the outside. Yasma looking to pounce down on her like a drop bear. Back suplex from Nova. Simple but effective. And at this point in the match, she's gotta do what she's gotta do to maintain control. Surfboard stretch, wanting to slow things down. Keep Miasma grounded. That's a fantastic strategy. Miasma is at her most dangerous when she's running around that ring. European uppercut. Sending Miasma stumbling back, but not far enough that she can't nail that back suplex side slam. Gets a two count. And a very rare look of shock on Miasma's face. Uh -oh, to the top rope. Nova's in the drop zone. Body splash from Miasma, giving Nova the lowdown. One, two. Honestly, at a loss for words almost at Nova's performance. I was not expecting this from the rookie in her second match, her first singles match. Did Miasma just do a spin a Rudy, by the way? I think I saw that correctly, right? And here we go again with this claw, just trying to rip the head of Nova off. But referee Tyson says, no, there was no tap. Nova isn't giving in. And I think she's found a new number one fan in me tonight and a lot of fans in that CMB universe. Tries for an uppercut. Nova with a kick to the gut. That gets caught, though, and a heel to the base of the skull. A bear heel at that. Y'all know how hard your heel Bowen is, and especially if you've got those chaff heels. Yasmin sent out onto the apron. Could be a DD to off the apron. Look at these fans in the front row. They are all on their feet. Two. Kick to the side of the head. The speaking of heads, Nova grabbing at hers. No sort of good sign. Miasma. Who knows what the hell she's jabbering on about. Into the surfboard stretch again. Nova contemplating. How, how can you formulate a plan, though, to deal with someone like Subject Miasma? Miasma. Making sure that Nova will forever remember her singles debut here in CMB, but Nova ensuring that Miasma remembers her as well. There we go. Look at reverse DDT, but only a two count still. Stop now onto the arm. Miasma branching out. What the? Standing shooting star. Miasma doing spin a Rudy shooting stars. That's what I'm talking about when I say there's no getting ready for Miasma. Ooh, swing a neck breaker and a tadpole splash from Nova. Quickly hooks the leg. One, two.
tries to go for some sort of leg drop bulldog, and I think Nash will just hit a one-handed power bomb on this chick. Nova comes right back at her though, with a brain buster. Stalled a bit as well, letting the blood rush to the head. Nova can hardly stand. A spear? Maybe a takedown attempt? Either way, Miasma defends and gets a release Tiger Bomb. Nova out of the ring she goes, showing off some ring instinct, knowing where she is at all times. And Miasma talking her, saying, what are you going to do now, try? And that infuriates Nova and might cost her this match, guys. Vertical suplex dropped into the sit-out powerbomb. Good night. Shoots the half, hooks the leg. One, two. <laughs> yeah, I think Miasma's reaction there is appropriate, but back to the top rope she goes, and surely looking for a second lowdown. Knees, knees, knees from Nova. I don't even know what to say, Nova. A star making performance here, guys. And one that is surely gonna get her noticed, but maybe by the wrong people. Including, not least of which, Kale Colt Val, but Nova wants another shot of Nova Kane. Power bomb instead from the asthma. Brought to her feet, Miasma looks her right in the eyes. And that's like looking at the eyes of a rabid animal. A second vertical suplex sit-out power bomb. And surely, surely, that's gonna be enough. Okay, Nova. With the heart and drive, but no matter how much heart you got, one, two, three, eventually it won't be enough. Miasma victorious. Instantaneously, Nova puts herself on the map here at CMV with a performance like that. Tail Colt Val even happened to be ejected. But all that being said, Miasma in the end with a second lowdown claims yet another victim. Could this be a favorite, guys, heading into the Battle Royal Sunday at Regicide? Miasma. I feel like she's staring into my very soul. I definitely simp Nova, no doubt about it. I'm a simp. Me and Proudfoot, members of the Nova Simp Club. That's my queen right there. And now it is time, my fine feathered friends, for our main event of the evening here on Crossfire number 32. And what a match it is going to be as CMV Global Champion Schmitty and Donna, his right-hand woman, The Purge, take on the team of Bloody Justice and Josh Wolf. And can these two get on the same page, guys, knowing that this Sunday it'll be a triple threat match, every man for himself, for that CMV Global Championship. Schmitty screwed Bloody Justice out of his one-on-one -on -one title shot back at Battle Scars, guys, but he paid for it. The Justice family abducting him, bringing him to the Bloody Forest, and we just got a peek, a little preview of exactly what Schmitty went through, the horrors he endured physically and mentally while being held captive, guys, and it took Josh Wolf. Josh Wolf had to be the one to go into the Bloody Forest and save him. Daughter contacting Wolf and saying, hey, you're not going to get your title shot if we don't get Schmitty back. And so Wolf did what he had to do and maybe in the process got on the bad side of the man he has to team with here tonight. 
bloody justice, but Wolf earned his shot at the Global Championship at Battle Scars, beating Jacob Ziegler, and he's not going to let anything stand in his way of taking that title from Schmitty, something he wanted to do way back at Purgatory towards the end of last season. He could have stopped Purge right there, right then, from taking over Crossfire, but he couldn't get the job done, and Wolf beats himself up for that. So now he's got another opportunity, but with Bloody Justice in the mix, guys, what is going to go down this Sunday at Regicide? And here tonight, what kind of mental condition, physical condition is Schmidt in? And can Bloody Justice and Josh Wolf work together for one night only? Schmitty and his right hand woman and daughter representing the Purge here tonight. And Schmitty seems to be in good spirits, but you have to imagine he's putting on a front, doesn't want to give up any weakness, whether that be mentally, whether that be physically, to Bloody Justice or Josh Wolf. This is the first time we've seen Schmitty compete on Crossfire in a while. This is the first time we're seeing Schmitty compete on Crossfire since before Battle Scars, where of course he was supposed to defend his global championship against Bloody Justice inside of a steel cage, but pulled a fast one on all of us, substituting himself for Dara. And of course, inside of that cage at Battle Scars, Dara beat Bloody Justice, so Justice has a bone to pick with Dara as well here tonight in this tag team match. Now you can tell Schmitty is ready to get his hands on Bloody Justice tonight. Bloody Justice has waited a long, long time for the opportunity he receives this Sunday at Regicide. For ages, it seems, people have picked Bloody Justice as the next big thing. The man to break that glass ceiling and become a main eventer, a headliner, a world champion. And it was supposed to happen last month at Battle Scars, but Schmitty did what he does best. Pulled the rug out from all of us. Well, now Bloody Justice has his shot. Can he make the most of it? We'll have to wait and see. And then there's Josh Wolf, who maybe even more than earning the global championship for himself, wants to take it from Schmitty and end the purge in their iron grip on Crossfire. Schmitty and his goons have held Crossfire hostage for damn near half a year. And like I mentioned before, Josh Wolf, he could have prevented it all from happening back in Purgatory if he had beaten Schmitty then for the vacant global championship. But instead, he couldn't get the job done on that night, and he's been beating himself up ever since. He hasn't stopped the fight against the Purge. And if you're being honest, he's lost more times than he has won. Looking back to Ascendance, where Jarek Lawson beat him for the United States Championship. But Wolf, you might get him down, you never get him out. He fought, he fought, and he beat Jacob Ziegler at Battle Scars. And even though he had to save Schmitty himself to ensure that he got his championship match, you can be sure that Wolf is not going to leave Regicide without that global championship. He'll either become the new CMB global champion or Schmitty is going to have to kill him. Bloody Justice and Josh Wolf, not the best of friends or anything. But beforehand, they were, well, united in a common goal to take down Schmitty and stop the purge. But after Josh Wolf infiltrated the Bloody Forest, 
took Schmitty, you can be sure that BJ is not at all interested in any sort of friendship nor respect between he and Josh Wolf. You can see Schmidt at the start of that match. He told Bloody Justice, bring it on, get across this ring right now. The game changer, it's not often somebody gets under his skin. Usually it's the other way around. But again, we just got a, a little snippet of what Schmitty had to have gone through while in captivity, while held by the Justice family. And we have all seen the Bloody Forest before on multiple occasions. It is not what I would call a uh, family vacation resort. Uh, probably the farthest thing from that. Absolute horrors lie within. And Schmitty was there for over a week before Joshua of all people had to be the one to rescue. Of course, Wolf only did that to get his guaranteed global championship match. It was a one-time deal for the benefit of both parties, and now back to war they go. Oh! Shoulder block runs over Josh Wolf. Pops him up. Deadlift, gut wrench, suplex. Josh Wolf, no stranger to Dada, retained his United States Championship against the Man Eater last season. Wolf has fought every single member of the Purge, tooth and nail, week after week, month after month, for half a year. And Wolf is doing it not for himself, but for Crossfire, for the company that he loves, and for the fans. Look at those punches right to the face of Dada. Wolf does not give a shit. He's not playing around anymore. Out of the ring goes Josh Wolf. God, I'm managing to stay right on top of him. Power and elbow tie up. Wolf overpowers the right hand woman of the global champion, the game changer Schmitty, who watches from the apron. Scoop slam now drops down behind us. Wolf punch right to the back of the head. Cheeky little jab caught, kick to the midsection. You see Schmitty playing with the crowd here. Again, Schmitty doesn't want to show any weakness. I'm sure that there is lasting mental damage. There's definitely lasting physical damage. But you gotta give it up to Schmitty. He is a professional. He's not gonna let Bloody Justice or Josh Wolf see weakness because if they do, they'll capitalize on it come regicide this Sunday. Stops to the chest. Schmitty has accomplished a lot ahead of the purge. Standing atop the mountain here on Crossfire. And Joshua has met him every single step of the way. Now Bloody Justice comes into the picture, wanting only the global championship. Josh Wolf on the hunt for Donna's blood tonight, but she's able to reverse midair. Doesn't stop Wolf from snapping her down with that GDT. Falls to his knees. Interesting that all of these individuals worship their own entity. Schmitty worships himself. Dada worships Schmitty. Bloody Justice worships the spider deities. And of course, Josh Wolf worships Fenrir. That demon within him, he's always fighting to keep caged up. He nearly came out while inside the bloody forest. And once again, overcame him. But Wolf was able to fight. How much fight does he have left in him though? Dominator coming from Dara able to escape off her shoulders and there's a high knee for you with that knee brace. And Josh Wolf, like I mentioned before, he is done holding anything back. Gouging at the eyes, the nose, the mouth of Donna, stomping on her shoulder. If Wolf wants to leave Regicide this Sunday as global champion, he needs that viciousness. We know Bloody Justice has it. We know Schmitty has it. Going after the 
shoulder now. Bloody Justice, legal man. I'll tell you what, Bloody Justice, Josh Wolf, not working like a well-oiled machine or anything, but working decently together. No sort of friction, tags in and out. Here comes Donna with the dominator. This time she gets it. And will we see a repeat of Battle Scars? One, two, no. Bloody Justice kicking out. Donna circling Justice like a great white shark in the deep blue sea. Smells that blood coming in for the kill. Doing most of the work, you might have been able to tell. Schmitty has barely been in this match. Oh, slammed out of the corner. Schmitty now asking for the tag as he sees Donna in big time trouble. Bloody Justice tries to stop her, gets a drop toe hold. Now Moon walking her way over. Here comes the global champion. Tries for a cheeky jab, gets a big boot. And I'm, at, I'm seeing what appears to be, is that a tattoo on the side of Schmitty? That's new. I don't think he had that the last time that we saw him. I'm not entirely sure what exactly it is. Did he, did he get that in the bloody forest or did he get that on his own time? Too afraid to ask. <laughs> Clothesline from Bloody Justice. Now going for the neck crank. Trying to break that head right off. Stops from Justice. There's one to the hand and another to the shoulder. Schmitty favors that reverse. Chin lock of his and so tries to lock that in with those damaged arms. Not gonna be able to get a very tight grip. Justice pulls him in, gives him the kiss goodnight. Sister's joy delivered. The game changer looking up at the lights, pinned by Bloody Justice. Will this be the sight we see at Regicide on Sunday? Only a two count though, as Donna gets stopped by Josh Wolf. And now Donna gonna get a taste of Sister's joy, but saved by Schmitty. Not often you see Schmitty bite the bullet for one of his Purge members. Look at that. What a sight to see. Donna and Schmitty. Out cold in the middle of the ring at the hands of Bloody Justice and Josh Wolf. Tries for a tag at Josh Wolf. Boot from Schmitty. Turns him around back into the corner of the purge. Back elbow. And Schmitty got all that turnbuckle. Bloody Justice seems fixated on Dara, and that's gonna be his downfall. Small package here by Schmitty. Can he steal it? Can he steal it? One! Only a one count. Now it's Schmitty salvating. Eyes wide. Killing shot to Bloody Justice. Old school Schmitty. One, two. Bloody Justice. More resilient than he has ever been. Fighting, fighting, fighting to become global champion. And finally knows what it feels like to reach the top of the mountain. But Schmitty has been there at every turn, screwing him, using the numbers game, using whatever tactics he can to keep that championship around his waist. But time has run out. Time has run out for Schmitty though, or Bloody Justice. Is his time in the sun done? A second old school Schmitty. Donna gonna stop Josh Wolf, and there's the three count. The Purge again escapes, but by the skin of their teeth. But there will be no Donna this Sunday. There will be Nobody but Schmitty himself when he's in that ring with two men who want his head on a silver platter. This Sunday is when it matters most. The global championship is on the line. There's no running. There's no hiding. Schmitty has his back against the wall. Can he escape like he did tonight? Or will we have a new global champion? And who will it be? 
Bloody Justice finally realizing his dream or Josh Wolf saving Crossfire and ending the purge. Mama Mavis, oh mama, they try my patience. Is gone. Who is left to save us? We mourn. I'm praying for my neighbors. They say the devil's at work and is calling favors. You say I'm dangerous. I speak for the nameless. I fly with the vultures. I be with them bangers. If change don't come, then the change won't come. If the bands make them dance, then the rain gon' come. Am I passing to the night? Looking through your eyes, all the world is out of your head. Be ready for it. Something out the country.